KSJE and the Farmington Public Library present Quinto's Hana and Tales. Hello, my name is Beth Troxell, and I am here from the Farmington Public Library to read you some books from our collection. The first book that I picked is a collection of Native American animal stories. It's called Native American Animal Stories Told by Joseph Bouchac from Keepers of the Animals. So this is the collection of different stories. Now this is the introduction, and this first one is going to be a story from the Miwok West Coast. And this is called Silver Silver Fox and Coyote Create Earth. So we're going to start with that one first. Silver Fox and Coyote Create Earth. Back then, Silver Fox was the only one living There was no earth, only water. Silver Fox walked along through the fog, feeling lonely. So she began to sing. I want to meet someone. 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 So she sang, and then she met. Coyote. I thought I was going to meet someone, Silver Fox said. Where are you traveling? Where are you traveling, Coyote said. Why are you traveling like this? I am traveling because I am lonely, Silver Fox said. I am also wandering around, said Coyote. Then it is better for two people to travel together, Silver Fox said. Then as they traveled, Silver Fox spoke. This is what I think, Silver Fox said. Let's make the world. How will we do that, Coyote said. We will sing the world, said Silver Fox. So the two of them began to sing and dance. They danced around in a circle, and Silver Fox thought of a clump of of sod. Let it come, Silver Fox thought, and then that clump of sod was there in Silver Fox's hands. Silver Fox threw it down into the fog, and they kept on singing and dancing. Look down, Silver Fox said. Do you see something there below us? I see something, Coyote said, but it's very small. Then let us close our eyes and keep dancing and singing, said Silver Fox. And that is what they did. They danced and sang, and beneath them earth took shape. Look down now, Silver Fox said. Coyote looked down. I see it, said Coyote. It is very big now. It is big enough. Then the two of them jumped onto earth. They danced and sang and stretched it out even more. They made everything on earth, the valleys and the mountains and the rivers and the lakes, the pines and the cedars and the birds and the animal people. That was what they did way back then. The end. That was Silver Fox and Coyote Create Earth. The next story is a Cree from the Subarctic story. And this is How the People Hunted the Moose. One day, a family of moose was sitting in the lodge. As they sat around the fire, a strange thing happened. A pipe came floating in through the door. Sweet-smelling smoke came from the long pipe, and it circled the lodge, passing close to each of the moose people. The old bull moose saw the pipe, but said nothing, and it passed him by. The cow moose said nothing, and the pipe passed her by also. So it passed by each of the moose people until it reached the youngest of the young 
bull moose near the door of the lodge. You have come to me, he said to the, to the pipe. Then he reached out and took the pipe and started to smoke it. My son, the old moose said, you have killed us. This is a pipe from the human beings. They are smoking this pipe now and asking for success in their hunt. Now, tomorrow, they will find us. Now, because you smoked their pipe, they will be able to get us. I am not afraid, said the young bull moose. I can run faster than any of those people. They cannot catch me. But the old moose said nothing more. When the morning came, the moose people left their lodge. They went across the land looking for food. But as soon as they reached the edge of the forest, they caught the scent of the hunters. It was the time of year when there is a thin crust on the snow and the moose found it hard to move quickly. These human hunters will catch us, said the old cow moose. Their feet are feathered like those of the grouse. They can walk on top of the snow. Then the moose people began to run as the hunters followed them. The young bull moose who had taken the pipe ran off from the others. He was still sure he could outrun the hunters. But the hunters were on snowshoes and the young moose's feet sank into the snow. They followed him until he tired and then they killed him. After they had killed him, they thanked him for smoking their pipe and giving himself to them so they could survive. They treated his body with care and they soothed his spirit. That night, the young bull moose woke up in his lodge among his people. Next to his bed was a present given him by the human hunters. He showed it to all of the others. You see, he said, it was not a bad thing for me to accept the long pipe that the human pe people sent to us. Those hunters treated me with respect. It is right for us to allow the human beings to catch us. And so it is to this day. Those hunters who show respect to the moose are always the ones who are successful when they hunt. So that was the story from the Cree, how the people hunted the moose. This next section is called Creation. And this is one from the Hopi from the Southwest. And the name of this story is How Grandmother Spider Named the Clans. After Tawa, the sky god, and Grandmother Spider had made earth and all of the things upon it, Tawa went back up into the heavens. Grandmother Spider remained with the animals and all of the people there in the four great caves of the underworld. It was left to Grandmother Spider to put things on earth into order. So Grandmother Spider gathered all of the living creatures around her. She began to separate the people into the different Indian nations, telling them how it would be, be from then on for them. So it was that she made the Ute and the Zuni and the Comanche and the Pueblo people and the Hopi and all of the others. So she named them and from then on they knew their names. So, too, she gave all of the animals their names so that they also would know who they were. Then, Grandmother Spider saw that life would not be good for the many animals and people there in the darkness of the underworld. With her two grandsons, the hero twins, beside her, she led the animals and the people up out of the four caverns. She led them until they came to an opening into the world above. They came out there next to the Colorado River in the place where the people still go to gather salt. As they came out, the turkey dragged his tail in the mud and his tail has been black-tipped ever since then. Grandmother Spider sent the morning dove ahead to find good places for the people to settle, places where there were springs and good soil for corn. 
Then Grandmother Spider separated the people into clans. She chose one animal to lead each of those groups of people, and from then on, those people carried the name of that animal. So it was that the snake clan, and the antelope clan, and the mountain lion clan, and the deer clan, and the other clans came to be among the Hopi. The people each followed their clan animal, and when they came to the place to build their homes, there they settled, and there they live to this day. So this was how Grandmother Spider named the clans, which was a Hopi Southwest tale. Now we're going to go over to the plains to the Osage clan. How the spider symbol came to the people. From the earliest days when they came together on this earth, the Osage people had been divided into two groups. These groups were the sky people and the earth people. The nine clans of the sky people always lived in the northern half of the village. The 15 clans of the earth people lived in the southern half of the village. These clans looked to the animals to be their teachers, to serve as symbols for them to live strong lives. Each clan had more than one animal as its symbol. One of these clans were called the Isolated Earth People. This is the story of how the spider became one of the symbols of that clan. One day, the chief of the Isolated Earth People was hunting in the forest. He was not just hunting for game, he was also hunting for a symbol to give life to his people some great and powerful animal that would show itself to him and teach him an important lesson. As he hunted, he came upon the tracks of a huge deer. Chief became very excited. Grandfather deer, he said, surely you're going to show yourself to me. You're going to teach me a lesson and become one of the symbols of my people. Then the chief began to follow the deer's tracks. His eyes were on nothing else as he followed those tracks, and he went faster and faster through the forest. Suddenly, the chief ran right into a huge spider's web that had been strung between the trees across the trail. It was so large and strong that it covered his eyes and made him stumble. When he got back up to his feet, he was very angry. He struck at that spider, which was sitting at the edge of the web. But the spider dodged aside and climbed out of the reach. Then the spider spoke to the man. Grandson, the spider said, why do you run through the woods looking at nothing but the ground? Why do you act as if you are blind? The chief felt foolish, but he felt he had to answer the spider. I was following the tracks of the great deer, the chief said. I am seeking a symbol to give life and strength to my people. I can be such a symbol, said the spider. How can you give strength to my people, said the chief. You are small and weak, and I didn't even see you as I followed the great deer. Grandson, said the spider, look upon me. I am patient. I watch, and I wait. Then all things come to me. If your people learn this, they will be strong indeed. The chief saw that it was so. Thus the spider became one of the symbols of the Osage people. The next section is called Celebration. So this last story was called How the Spider Symbol Came to the People. This was a Plains tale. The next section, Celebration, kicks off from the Mohawk Eastern Woodland. And it is called the rabbit dance. Long ago, a group of hunters were out looking for game. They had seen no sign of animals, but they went slowly and carefully through the forest, knowing that at any moment they might find something. Just ahead of them 
was a clearing. The leader of the hunters held up his hand for the others to pause. He thought he had seen something. All of the men dropped down on their stomachs and crept up to the clearing's edge to see what they could see. What they saw amazed them. There, in the corner of the clearing, was the biggest rabbit any of them had ever seen. It seemed to be as big as a small bear. One of the hunters slowly began to raise his bow. A rabbit as large as that would be food enough for the whole village. But the leader of the men held out his hand and made a small motion that the man with the bow understood. He lowered his weapon. Something unusual was happening. It was best to just watch and see what would happen next. The rabbit lifted its head and looked toward the men. Even though they were well hidden on the other side of the clearing, it seemed as if that giant rabbit could see them. But the rabbit did not take flight. Instead, it just nodded its head. Then it lifted one of its feet and thumped the ground. As soon as it did, other rabbits began to come into the clearing. They came from all directions, and like their chief, they paid no attention to the hunters. Now the big rabbit began to thump its foot against the ground in a different way. Ba-bump, 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 ba-bump. It was like the sound of a drum beating. The rabbits all around made a big circle and began to dance. They danced and danced. They danced in couples and moved in and out and back and forth. It was a very good dance that the rabbits did. The hunters who were watching them found themselves tapping the earth with their hands in the same beat as the big rabbit's foot. Then, suddenly, the big rabbit stopped thumping the earth. All of the rabbits stopped dancing. Pa-bum! The chief of the rabbits thumped the earth one final time. It leaped high into the air, right over the man's head, and it was gone. All of the other rabbits ran in every direction out of the clearing, and they were gone too. The men were astonished at what they had seen. None of them had ever seen anything at all like this. None of them had ever heard or seen such a dance. It was all they could talk about as they went back to the village. All thought of hunting was now gone from their minds. When they reached the village, they went straight to the longhouse where the head of the clan mothers lived. She was a very wise woman and knew a great deal about the animals. They told her their story. She listened closely. When they were done telling the story, she picked up a water drum and handed it to the leader of the hunters. Play that rhythm which the rabbit chief played, she said. The leader of the men did as she asked. He played the rhythm of the rabbit's dance. That is a good sound, said the clan mother. Now show me the dance which the rabbit people showed you. The hunters then did the dance while their leader played the drum. The clan mother listened closely and watched. When they were done, she smiled at them. I understand what has happened, she said. The rabbit people know that we rely on them. We hunt them for their food and for clothing. The rabbit chief has given us the special dance so that we can honor its people for all that they give to the human beings. 
If we play their song and do their dance, then they will know we are grateful for all they continue to give us. We must call this new song the Rabbit Dance, and we must do it, men and women together, to honor the rabbit people. So it was a new social dance was given to the Iroquois people. To this day, the rabbit dance is done to thank the rabbit people for all they have given, not only food and clothing, but also a fine dance that makes the people glad. So that was the rabbit dance. And this was the Eastern Woodland area. So this was the collection of Native American animal stories told by Joseph Bruchak. And there are still a lot of stories left to go. So if you're interested in reading this, um, you can go to the Farmington Public Library. And we have uh, similar books also like this in our collection of folk tales. You can also go to www.infoway.org to find out more uh, information about our programs or visit our online catalog. So this has been Beth Troxel reading to you from the Farmington Public Library. Thank you. This has been Quinto's Hana and Tales, presented by the Farmington Public Library and KSJE 90.9 FM.